Terrific. Hello and welcome to Seismic Cinema. And James and I are very excited to finally delve into the world of Lost after talking about it on off for a while. So you can follow Seismic Cinema on Facebook, X, Instagram, Threads, and TikTok. You can watch or listen to us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all those other places. You can support our boy Gary from Seismic Soccer and buying a mic at our Buy Me A Coffee page. And also we are part of the Podpack Collective. And make sure you check out all those awesome podcasts. Dave, Liam, it's a trailer. Watch it if you can podcast. Join us for each episode as we create box sets of our favourite films and TV shows. We go through the cast to see what else they've been in, along with any recommendations. We pick our favourite characters, performances, moments and highlights from the soundtrack too. We ask if there's anything to make it better and look at the lasting legacy of our pick. We have a little fun with our quick fire round and finally, what else would you like list based on themes from the episode? Maybe, just maybe, you should watch it if you can. What if they've already seen it? Well, they can watch it again if they can. All right, James, so we're just going to get right into the, the discussion today. Happy with that, mate. Go for it. Let's, let's talk all things lost. Okay, so we, we went back and forward on this. We decided just to review the, the pilot episodes because it is, it is a two-parter. Um, and we're hopefully going to come back in the future and discuss um, some of the seasons as a whole. So, James, just a wee bit of background before we get into it. I know we've kind of talked about this before, but for anyone who's not heard your story, how did you get into Lost? So, I watched Lost um, when it initially came out. Um, it was, I'm pretty sure around on this, it was Channel 4 initially. Could okay. be wrong in that, um, but then it can move to Sky. So as it kind of, I watched this as it unfolded when I was at uni, and I remember me and my mate at uni doing my undergrad. It was like, oh, did you watch Lost this week? But we always used to um, find the episodes. So we basically did be aired in America earlier than they would be shown in the UK. Um, we managed to find the episodes um, online and we used to just kind of go to uni and then come back and we'd watch them and every week it'd be like a real, you know, you would dissect the episode and then kind of try and figure out what's what's happening and what and kind of what lies in the future um, with it all because it's, it's a very intriguing programme. It's, it's one of the best shows ever made in my opinion, but um, I agree. It's, it's I agree. It just gets you talking. So I watched it when it came out, mate. Um, and it was like week every week. It's like I need to get my loss fixed. There's a few. There's a few. There's a few kind of um, TV shows out about that time. I think Dexter was out about that time as well. And I managed to do the same with Dexter. Um, but certainly, um, we lost. It was like oh, every week I had to make sure I set time aside after uni to watch it. And have no interruptions because it's one of those shows, you know. But I, I, I watched it when it came out, mate. A bit yeah, of I, I had a very similar experience to you, but with another show we're going to talk about uh, soon, which was Suits. I, I did what you did, where I, I watched it on, like, on my phone on like random websites because it wasn't out in the UK yet. But in terms of Lost, um, I only watched it a couple of years ago, which we've talked about before. Uh, so I watched the, the whole thing, and well, saying that I watched season one. I'll be honest; I kind of didn't get through season one as quick as I would on a rewatch. And um, it was really when it kind of season one ended and season two started that I got really hooked with the show. I don't know um, how you felt with that, and but from that point onwards, I was hooked. Um, I, I now class it as my my second favorite show of all time. Um, so it's definitely one that I'm I'm really uh, got fond memories of. Oh, definitely, mate. Um, what's your favorite your favorite show of all time? Just out of curiosity. So it's, so it's, so it's all right, okay. Yeah, it's not one I've seen, mate. So once we do that that um, review, I'll be able to kind of yeah. talk to you 
through that you know, with fresh eyes and things. So I look okay. forward to that. A big reason for doing this and the, the Suits one to come was that both shows are getting a documentary made about them uh, this year, uh, bringing on a lot of the old cast members. So that's something I'm really excited about. Uh, definitely. It's been a long time since it has been aired, do you know what I mean? And a lot of the characters I've done went on to bigger and better things. Mm. You can see the characters in older programmes that you go, oh, I recognise him for Lost, you know. Just one of those shows. Although I've just started watching a show the last couple of days, which I think might might rival these two, potentially. Uh, I don't know if you've ever watched Billions? No. Or heard, it, or heard of it? Is that one with the rock uh, in it? No. No, I've, I've got it mixed up. It's Easy uh, What's his face? I forgot his name. Guy with the red hair. It's in Homeland. Oh, aye. Um, I know you're talking about me. I can't remember his name now, uh, but I know you're talking about I should, because I was just watching it. But anyway, uh, really enjoying that. Right, well, the main course is getting into law, so it's a two-part pilot. We're honest, a bit like the show at times. We're not quite sure how we're going to tackle this, but we're just going to kind of throw everything on the page and, and see what sticks. So uh, if we start with the first part so we'll kind of break it into the two the two parts it did it originally it is two separate parts or is that just what happened on social um streaming services thereafter i think it came out in two parts mate yeah because sometimes mm. sometimes shows just launch two or three episodes at, at the in the at the start you know no i think this no you i can't remember no, i'm pretty sure it was a week and week thing because it was a pilot, it might have been just the two episodes at the start and then mm. did the week, week on week. Anyway, we'll, we'll treat them separately just for, for Totten's sake. So where would you like to start? What's your, your kind of most memorable aspect of um, the pilot, the first pilot? Um, I think the most memorable aspect of the, the pilot in the first episode anyway is probably the chaotic nature of the whole thing. Mm. I mean... You wake. We say we wake up. We, we, we do wake up. We do wake up. We were um, there. <laughs> <laughs> no, die. You no, know, as Jack is he in, in the in the jungle, and then he's kind of that kind of. It's the because he's lying down. He's in like the jungle and kind of setting. It's all quiet. The moment he kind of he stands up, you can hear things. He runs towards the beach, and it's just pandemonium. The planes crashed. Um. Everyone's, you know, screaming and don't know what to do. That whole, in terms of like cinematography and all that, there and the chaotic nature of being in that situation, I could imagine it anyway, mate. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's oh. uh <laughs> oh hello. Um, <laughs> um, my so cat was on. My cat was on the screen for any audio listeners. <laughs> Um, <laughs> what was I saying? Right. Um, so want, I think he, did, he, he didn't want the dog getting all the the glory. Uh Vincent. <laughs> no, I think it's just a pure chaotic nature of everything that's, that's happened. I mean, it's just even the, the noise behind it all. Cause you can still hear the plane, mm. no, the crashing. You can you know hear the the screaming and stuff. So that is quite it's quite daunting. So I think for me anyway, mate, that's probably the what I remember most from the, from the pilot because it's just that you're on the beach and you're seeing all that stuff. Yeah. Obviously, as as the pilot goes on, you, you you learn a lot more about different characters and things. But that's always the that starting point of any show. I think it's up there. Yeah, I would, I would agree. The the kind of the sound in the episode is fantastic and I'm probably already mixing up parts one and two, but I think the way they captured that chaoticness you described of the the crash, but also when they're on the plane and everyone's putting on the face masks, I felt like you actually felt like you were on that plane. Um, I actually went on a holiday to Paris not long after um, watching Lost or finishing Lost. And I must admit, it was running through my mind as I was getting onto the plane, but it does really capture that visceral nature. I think it's a good term for it. Um, you really felt you were there. Ah, uh, definitely. There's a, like the, the plane scenes, um, you know, the flashbacks on the plane. 
definitely if you do feel that you were there and being part of the characters. But it's a lot of like because I know the, the in the first pilot you've got the you've got the Jack flashback and in the second one you've got Charlie and Kate's flashback that run parallel with one another because you mm. see the the crash no the crash but the well I suppose it was a crash at the end of the day but um through their eyes at the same time if that makes sense. Um but even on island as well there's a lot of kind of chaotic scenes which I'll come on to which I think it's quite good as well with the the music and stuff behind it. Yeah. I like the, you know, when like the characters are kind of just like not relaxing, but they're starting to kind of settle on the beach because they know they're probably going to be there for a while. Although Shannon doesn't think that, um, you know, that music score that plays, it's like quite slow, but really powerful. I, I mm-hmm. don't really know if it's got a name, but do you know the bit I'm talking about? Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's really good. Um, it's actually uh, it was Michael Giacchino that did the music, who I first came across prior to this when he did Rogue One's score. All right. He's obviously probably done a lot of other films as well, but that was the, the first place I came across him. There's just Star Wars reference there. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually it was actually in my notes, but yeah. So yeah, I like that. Um, if we just go back to, we're also talking about the the start of the film. It's such an iconic scene, isn't it? When TV show, what is it? Film. No, I didn't. <laughs> I'll just go back in time and sort that. Um, when Jack's running through the wreckage, just trying to save absolutely everybody. Aye. I mean that. Can I establish him as a leader in that? Because he's obviously don't know his profession at that point, but. He, when he starts talking to um, try to save people, there's like Rose he's trying to save. There's the guy who turns out to be the US Marshal. Man with Scrapnel. That's what I was going to say. In my notes, I've wrote Guy with Shrapnel. <laughs> 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 um, aye, so he's just kind of in the bit where he's obviously he's, he's trying to save some. Was it, I can't remember who it is exactly now, but Boone comes over and goes, Oh, why don't we get a pen and you know we, we create a kind of airway type thing? He goes, I go and you find a pen then, um, <laughs> just try to get him out of the way, which probably like, kind of shows it. You no, know, he's get he's try to calm things down by getting the you know cl- clearing the area and just getting him out of the way type of thing without panicking. I think it was quite obvious probably that he was a doctor um, early on. Oh, why? I, say I wrote down a, I wrote down a couple of quotes there. The the Boone Jack exchanges are pretty golden. Oh. Um, Jack says, seriously think about giving that license back when he said he was like a, a lifeguard or something like that. Oh, he's, a, he's a lifeguard, I. <laughs> and then Boone appears back at the end and says, I didn't know which one would work best. And Jack just went, they're all great. <laughs> which, um, establishes Jack, Jack is quite kind like he could easily have just like went off and won it been there but he decided just to thank him instead well that's what I've said I've said been getting pens said um, gets, me, gets me away from the situation returns he's done good so it's kind of like bedside manner type thing and it's like oh it doesn't matter he, he, he's still done well do you know what I mean so he was kind there were it seemed in, in the pilot at least that they were building Boone up to be quite a big character, it seemed. It's hard did to tell, get, I think, mate. Did you get that impression? Well, he was, I've noted down, he's a, there was a lot of exchanges between him and Shannon, and then, um, as we find out in the second the second episode of the pilot, that he goes in the hike as well, just to protect Shannon, really. But um, it's hard to say, because, I mean, I would say that, Chin and Son weren't really built up too much in the first and second mm. episodes, but they turned out to be quite big characters, really. Yeah, um, there's 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 a couple of things to note in the pilot is a uh, Jin and Sawyer don't come across great in the pilots, do they? No, they don't. Um, so I so I've written down that you know, obviously Michael may talk to Son. He was asking, well, have you seen my boy? Which is like one of the, f- maybe the fourth or fifth time he says that in the bloody um, episode. And there's more to come, 
point in that. Um, Walt! <laughs> Walt! Aye. Uh, you see my boy? So basically, I saw, so obviously, um, Michael's talking to Son. Son appears to understand him. I think that's important for future. Mm. But, you know, she knows that Jen's watching and Jen's will be a bit overly protective, asking her to cover up her kind of um, her, her button on her top because you, th- you might think that she's going to be kind of, I don't know, appealing to Michael in that, in that way. So it does they come across by great in that way. And then you've got Sawyer, who is just a, you know, what's the polite way of saying this? He's, I think he's kind of the, the, the hard man in the island, isn't he? He's because mm. he basically accuses Side as is like a you know, he's the one that crashed the plane. And then yeah, you, you find great. No, it wasn't great. And then uh, so there's a bit of two and two and throw for the two. Um so and he the first fight is is Sawyer on the island. Um because he accuses him of crashing the plane. Mm. Which wasn't a nice moment really. Um but but then you see why he thinks that. Because he's done dealing with uh, handcuffs and things like that. And you know what I mean? So it's, it's immediately just doing this uh, pilot episode, how, how difficult it is not to talk about what's to come. <laughs> well, that's it. I think, we, I think we, we've just learned in the first 15 minutes <laughs> of recording that we're just going to have to go back and forward in the whole thing and yeah. just treat the, the two episodes as one. I think no, I don't mean so much just the second pilot. I mean just the show as a whole. Oh, I well, like, I will. <laughs> I. <laughs> well, I already mentioned that his son can understand them. You know what I mean? I'm like, well, yeah. that's not really revealed until like, I don't know, maybe the end of the first season one, season two. Can't remember. S- something I noticed as well later in it may have been the second part of the pilot uh, that she unbuttons her top, like when he when Jin disappears. Is that in the pilot? It's in one of the first, maybe the second one, but right. he he goes away somewhere. I think he's given like the he's trying to get everyone to eat the the See fish. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Wherever yeah. they were, um, and she actually she unbuttons the top button uh, oh, when he's I not there. Missed that then. So it says a lot about their dynamic that they don't seem a very happy couple, and that he's been very controlling of her. Aye. I say so. What'd you, what did you make of a uh, Shannon in the pilots? Well, I've written down uh, there's a sense of entitlement now, um, selfishness, because she, you know, everyone's kind of trying to look after one another and kind of find things being resourceful, and yet she's and Ben makes comment that you know she's just too busy to talk for Papa Tan because she's making the assumption that oh we'll we'll they'll come and find us. Do you know what I mean? The, just not taking part in any of the initially, not take not taking part in any of the kind of the hard graft and things. And you know, um, I didn't like Shannon particularly in the in the in the pilots. I don't think you were really meant to either. Um, but her her character does develop through through the season, as we know. But I don't think we were meant to kind of like her. I think I think there's always kind of one person. Of, You'd be careful what I say here, but there'd be one person on the plane, given the probability and all that, you know, there'd be one person like that. Um, so I don't know what you thought of her, mate, but I just, I didn't like her really. Yeah, she was an- annoying to put it in the nicest term. Right. But there was also a bit more to her, as we discovered in part two, where she actually came in useful on the trek when it turns out she could speak French. Aye, so. I mean, without her, they wouldn't have known what, what they had, uh, what the message has said on the, on the transceiver. So she did come in useful at that point, even though she didn't. She lacked confidence a wee bit as well, didn't she? Because she was like, "Oh, I only went to France to, you know, just well." She went to be going there for studying, but she mm-hmm. was like, "Oh, I was only partying, only drinking. I, did, I don't really remember any French." But she did know. Um, yeah. But also, that came a wee bit of panic as well. Because she was not really confident in her ability. Mm-hmm. The when was lost? When did lost? What year did it originally come out? Was it two thousand and ten oh. kind of time? No, earlier not a chance, that. mate. It's a talking about two thousand and four or something like that, maybe earlier than that. So uh-huh. was she in? Was she in lost before she was in Taken? 
Maggie Grace. Ah, so it is. That is all. I didn't. Uh, make it's a Liam, uh, Liam Neeson's or Brian Mills's daughter from Taken. Uh, yeah. So it is. Which, which I noted down was quite interesting because it said she was studying in Paris, which is where she gets kidnapped and taken. I was about to say that. I was about to say that. <laughs> right, so. So I wondered if it was a nod. I wondered if the Paris bit was a wee bit of a nod to Taken, but I suppose Taken probably happened afterwards. Well, I'm going to look this up because I remember being at uni. Taken was 2008, I think. So I went to uni in 2003, 2008. So um, I'm sure sure it came out 2004 or something like that. Um, I thought it was later than that for some reason. No, it was not later than that, man. It was because I went to uni. 2004, the 22nd of September 2004. So I was in second year when it came out. It's mental. You must have been, mate. I, I was a uh, uh, second year at uni. Because I, like I say, mate, I remember coming back for uni and then having to watch it. Because me and my mates at uni were talking about it all the time. And we like, and some some of them would watch it before we went into class. Hmm. And I'd be like, no, no, <laughs> no one, I don't want to hear anything. Do you know what I mean? I want to see yeah. it. I don't want to any spoilers. Anyway, we digress. So taken came out afterwards. So Aye, it was it wasn't a it wasn't a reference to it, but it's just a, a funny coincidence that it was Paris. Ah, that's true. I you didn't um because Alien was watching it because she watched Lost and she didn't realise who it was either. It must just be the blonde hair. Just, just as soon as you say that, mate, I was like, and I just kind of thought Lost uh, taken. I'm going. It is the same lassie. I didn't realise even yeah. when I watched it there just to for a take one here. I did even make that connection. There you go. I love Taken's one of my probably favourite action films of all time, actually. I love it. Oh, it's a good a great movie. Marco could, from Tripoli. That, that could be a future episode right there. There you go, mate. Anyway, uh so yeah, we've talked about we've talked a wee bit about a uh, Chris, we've talked a wee bit about Shannon. Uh, what about Saeed? What do you make of him? We talked a wee bit about him when he was fighting with Sawyer, but I thought he was quite a reserve guy at the start, mate. Um, he's definitely somebody who is kind of... He's somebody who's des- definitely resourceful. Um, we find out a wee bit more about him because he talked to Holly about, you know, um, fighting the Gulf War and all that. And then hmm. he was like, you're in, in the Navy, you're in the Army. And then he breaks the... He goes, no, no, actually, I was in the Republican Guard. And Holly's face was like, mm. <laughs> So that's that's not what he expected. Yeah. And and I do like, obviously we know a wee bit more about Saeed as the, as the seasons go on and whatever, and we get a lot of flashbacks with him, but uh, I quite like the fact he says that he's a communications officer, because that leaves it up for interpretation, what does that actually mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because uh, he, he, he takes the transceiver up to higher ground with um, Kate, Charlie, Shannon, Boone, and Sawyer. And it's like, oh, when he, he seems to know a lot about the communications, being in military grade and all that sort of thing. So I think, I think when we first watched it, he's like, oh, he's a communications guy. He's, he's, he does with the radios, and but it, he goes into a wee bit more detail on what he actually did mm-hmm. um, and what he had to do um, in order to survive. So I did, I did like, I like Side as a character, mate. Yeah. I think his character was was cracking all the way through. Um, but uh, pilot, he was quite, you know, quite quiet, but. Definitely somebody who could hold his own. Yeah, he's a nice, he's a nice guy. He's, he's quite gentle, really, in spirit. Um, but he's also part of. I know you won't like this term at the moment, but part of the leadership group. <laughs> 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 but in the he context is, of Lost, he is. I'd yeah. say Saeed, along with the likes of Jack and maybe Locke, who we'll we'll get on to. But Saeed shared a nice moment with uh, Harley, who. I don't know about you, but he's one of my my favourite characters of the show. He might not be. But... No, how can you not like Holly, mate? Do you know what I mean? He's just a lovable guy, isn't he? He's happy-go-lucky, fun guy. Um, I don't really have a bad word to say about him, really. Um, I, he brings a lot of humour to it, doesn't he, as well? Uh, I had a few Harley ones that I thought were quite funny. Um, was this him? Was it? That... Oh... When he was saying he didn't like blood, and he said like I might throw up on you, <laughs> was that him that said that? Aye, uh, uh, that's the scene where he, where uh, Jack takes the shrapnel out the guy, yeah. and he's like, and 
and Hully just kind of passes out and then he just kind of lands on the guy because he's passed out. I, thought, I don't like blood. <laughs> so that was funny. There was another Hurley moment. Uh, I could really relate to this at the moment because I ask Aileen this quite a lot. Uh, he just goes up to Claire and he goes, any more baby stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Do you think he's maybe the kind of guy who doesn't really know what to say in, in the time of crisis? Uh, and so what he, he, he tries to make up some kind of, you know, filler with humour and things, you know what I mean? So uh, he's, he's a great his, part. His character develops as well, as we know, but mm-hmm. uh, I think Holly's uh, a good character in it. The, I like when he, He's like basically saying that the the dead bodies are starting to stink, and he's like, "What should we do about the B O D Y S?" <laughs> and so, because because Walt's there, then Walt's like, "You mean B O D I E S?" <laughs> I know that was funny. I wrote that, that down. He said, "We should die," and he goes, "We should bury them." Just the way he says B O D Y S, <laughs> and then he's like, "Try to spell bodies." It's B O D I E S. Well, I just re- I just remembered why. Said and Hurley kind of had a nice wee kind of friendship moment where they shook hands. It's because a uh, Sawyer called him was it Lardo? Aye. Uh, Shut up, Lardo. Yeah, uh, so that was the I've written down. That was the first of his kind of because Sawyer has nicknames for everybody, um, mm-hmm. in the, in the whole island really. So, but he kind of he he talks to Hurley. He calls him quite a few names as the scenes go on. So he calls him Lardo. He calls Kate's sweetheart. He calls Jack Doc. Mm-hmm. And that's all, that's all I can remember from the pilots anyway, but it does go on. That was, a nice, that was a nice moment when he calls uh, Jack Doc for the first time. Aye. Obviously knowing what's to come. True. Um, so we talked a wee bit We've mentioned Walt a couple of times. Obviously, he goes on to have quite the character art, as does his his father. Um, what did you make of their dynamic in the pilot? Was so there was, that was it Michael was and Walt? Why did I keep what did I keep calling him Chris? You said Chris at one point, and I was like, "Who's Chris?" And I thought maybe I, 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 I heard that it, wrong. I said it with so much confidence. I don't know why I thought it was his name was Chris. Is Michael. there another character called Chris? I don't think so, man. That's what confused me. <laughs> 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 I'm just wait, I'm just waiting on you correcting me. Right, so what? So you mean Walt and Walt and um, Michael then? Michael, yes. So I think it's quite clear because there was a few things that you know that made me question a few things. So um, when Walt was reading the, the magazine, he's like, "That's in Spanish," and he goes, can you, can, "Do you know? Can you read? Can you do mm-hmm. you know Spanish?" And he goes, "No, I just found it on the plane." So that was like, well. You're his dad. How do you not know he can speak Spanish or not? So that was the first thing. Yeah. And then the second thing came up, you know, Jack and Michael had a wee kind of interaction when he was looking for uh, antibiotics and things. And he goes, have you seen Walt? Of course he did, because he says it to everybody. And he goes, mm-hmm. I, um, or have, we seen, have we seen the dog? And he goes, ah, it's in jungle. I've seen it, it's just in there. But he says, he asked Michael the question, how old is he? And he goes, nine, ten. So he's not sure how old his son is, yeah. which 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 we don't we find out in the second episode why that is. But at the moment, I was like, oh, um, why is it? He, why does he know his age? You know, anything about his son now? Really? We find that out. Um, I think in, in a Walk's perspective, he, he knows he doesn't really know his dad, um, and he's the only companion he's got with him is Vincent, is the dog, and I think he would rather. You know, be with the dog than be with his dad. Mm-hmm. That was my interpretation of it, anyway. Yeah, um, I think looking back, it is quite obvious. I don't. Maybe it wasn't obvious as obvious the first time you watch it, but when you know their their backstory, it is quite obvious that there isn't that great a relationship there. Um, I don't know if this is reaching a wee bit, but see the the Spanish comic that he had. Mm-hmm. Was that his comic, or did he find it? No, that well, we find out whose comic that is. That? That's Holly's comic. All oh, right, okay. So that's Holly's comic, and I've written this down because that's a that comic's a foreshadowing of what happens in the rest of this the season. Julie, um, mm. there's a lot in there that 
that sh so basically there's a a comic strip inside that that has a polar bear in it, hmm. and we find the polar bear in the second episode. Um, but I don't think we've seen the polar bear in the episode. I think we, it's future we see that. Um, but that's Holly's magazine. So Holly was like right. reading that on the plane. So it's not his. He just found it on the island, as he said. Okay. Nah, uh, obviously there's a lot of seasons, a lot of episodes. So have you? You obviously watched this when it first came out. Have you done rewatches since? Nah. Um, I've watched. I've, I tend to kind of flick it into the pilot. It's on Disney Plus now. So I think when I when I first got Disney Plus, I seen Lost. Or I go, oh, I'll give that. Have another bash. Hmm. And then because because I've seen Lost, that you know what I mean. I know how intense it is. And how busy I'm learning things. It's just never get ready to watching it episode by episode because it consumes you. Um, it's fun watching the pilot, though, isn't it? The pilot, like I say, I watched the pilot. That's probably about the maybe third, fourth time I've seen hey, the pilot. I've done it as um, well. <laughs> so it's just, and I can because I know what happens. It's not really a lot of kind of you don't have, you'll pay attention as much because as the seasons go on, there's a lot of kind of you know intricate parts that you have to pay attention to and then try and make connections here and there. Not so much in the in the two episodes. So I've seen the pilot maybe three or four times. Yeah. Um I've so. done some I've done similar um recently. Um I do I do view this as quite a, a comfort show. Cause it's quite it's quite a cozy one. See when the, the rain starts to come down uh, and they're all sheltering. Let's like, see if you're watching it in like a nice cozy house with a wee blanket or whatever it's Cozy, cozy vibes. Everyone's covering the mate, apart from John Locke. Yeah, so that's a good we segue. This is why I like doing it unstructured because you can just go with the segues. Um, he's an interesting fellow, isn't he? Very much so. Um, doesn't really have a lot of dialogue, mate, does he? In at all no. in, the, in the first second of the episodes. But he has important um, dialogue in the second oh, he, part. He does. And I've written this is, down. Which is a great foreshadowing for the future. So I've written this down. So where are we here? So he, he talks to Walt. So this is where we find out about Walt and Michael because he, he opens up to, to Locke about his dad. And, you know, he's talked about his, um, he lived in Australia with his mum. His mum got sick and his dad had to bring him back to America. Um, but there was a, at that point in time, uh, Michael, no Michael, sorry, Locke has got the game backgammon. Mm-hmm. And he explains the rules of backgammon. Now, what for me, what I took from this was how he described backgammon. So there was there was two for two players. We would normally say one is white, one is black. Mm -hmm. He mentioned that one is light mm -hmm. and one is dark, which is a foreshadowing technique because as we find out later on, season five, maybe I can't remember what season it is now, but. That you know, Jacob, who was on Born on Island and the Man in Black, who we find who that is, they're the light and they're the dark of the of the of the, mm -hmm. the island, and they played the game backgammon, um, as well. So I just like I, I found it quite interesting how he described that. Yeah. So I don't know what you thought of it, mate. Yeah, um, it's quite a fun bit to watch when you have watched the whole show and obviously <laughs> you know the reference to the game but you also know kind of how uh, Locke's uh, character progresses as well. There was an interesting bit I found just to go with your screen name for the moment, the, the spooky monster. So obviously various points throughout the two pilots we hear the noises and we see the trees going wild and um, Walt thinks it's Vincent I don't know how the dog could make that much of a... <laughs> I know. Is that Vincent? I don't think it's Vincent. <laughs> Kerfuffle. Um, we'll get more into that um, shortly, but I was just interested that one of... I don't know if it's the first time or the second time you hear the noise of the smoke monster. Um, it pans to lock. Like we won't dissect that too much, but I just don't know if you noticed that yourself. I did notice that, and I've... You know, as I, I remember doing all my kind of like going to lost theories and things as the show came out, as the show ended. And um, one of the things I, met, I I found, and I don't know, right, but see when Jack wakes up on an island, mm -hmm. you just see his eyes. 
mean, science will tell you it's it's pupil dilation. You know, as you open your eyes, your pupils get smaller and things like that. But there's a theory out there that it was actually the smoke monster that placed them at that point in the, in the in the jungle there. And as he opened his eyes, the smoke monster was was leaving. Mm. And Jack was out of it. I don't know. It's just a theory, mate. Do you know what I mean, we don't yeah. we, we we are none the wiser to that. But it's just a theory. But I, I do remember the it panning on lock, mm-hmm. which again does that have any meaning to what comes in the future? I don't know. Well, it does. It does retrospectively. But um, yeah. there's obviously been a lot said about like unfinished plot threads in the show and maybe making things up as you go along but just watching that bit and knowing what's to come i like to think that had been planned without saying what it was no thank you i i think so i like to think jj abrams made a made he was i think most of the show i mean don't get me wrong there's unanswered questions quite a few a few times in the show but as I said in previous podcasts, mate, I, I like that. The, um, the ambiguous nature of mm. things. I don't think every question should be answered. Yeah. I think it, it, never bo- it never bothered me either because I actually liked, I think we probably talked about this before, like, I liked the end of the show. Like A lot of people don't. I like it as well, mate. I, I, um, I thought it was perfect. But I've, of, I've also said um, that those who don't like it might possibly not have got it. I well said that as well. I feel, like we've had, I feel like we've had this conversation before, whether it was on air or off air, I'm not sure. Uh, well, we, I don't want to talk about the end of the film, the end of the TV show, mate, because I think... You said film. I did say film. <laughs> um, but that, that'll come when we do our season reviews and things, I mean, but I'd I don't think the photo got it. And I think that people made the assumption that that's what happened all along. And for that reason, they go, oh, I knew that. It's the start of season one. It's a wee bit more than that. Um, so it's a wee bit, I, I don't think they did get it. And I think it's quite easy to say that they didn't, they, they didn't like the end in the TV show because it's like, oh, I'll fit in with their narrative. And I think that me, you, and a few others, by the way, who do like the ending of the show are in the minority and mm-hmm. that probably says a lot more than about us than it does to about other people who didn't like it because it made no a, bit of a, a bit of a herd mentality then i think so um it's, it's kind of similar to how the end of game of thrones was perceived however for that one i'm i'm probably on the majority side with that one uh, but i don't think lost ended through lack of planning and effort. I think some people just didn't like how it ended. I don't think it was like rushed or I don't think anything like that. No, I don't think it was rushed. No, not by any stretch of the imagination. I know there's a few seasons shorter than others just because the writer strikes happened at that particular point and I thought, hmm, okay. Because I think season four had like 12 episodes or something on it. Mm-hmm. So I think maybe if they did have more episodes in the earlier seasons, then I don't know if it would be either a better or a worse. I don't know. Um, I'm just happy. You know, I don't want to go in too much about what could have been. Do you know what I mean? I think it ended the way it did, and I, I liked it. This is a good wee segue, just because of what we're talking about. Just to talk about a couple of the social media comments that we had. Um, our friend Craig from What's the Script said, and he put, he had the the gif of Locke with the orange in his mouth, which is an absolute classic. Which, um, he says it's one of the best shows ever aired. Why TV was invented? Watched it three times and have the physical box set, which I will have until I leave this earth. Maybe on a plane that crashes on an island in heaven limbo. And I replied, replied saying, "Love it, bro. Would love to end up in purgatory with you." Um, on an island, by the way. See on an island where the plane crashed. Mm-hmm. That's where you can find what's the script. Oh, you stole my bit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I would do that. <laughs> I, I, w- I was, I was going to say that the the smoke monster is actually what's the script. <laughs> anyway, sorry, just a, uh, wee, just a wee plug, 
are we plug for our pals at what's the script um review it yourself also says that they love this series and they've reviewed season one uh, you can check that out on spotify but only after you check out this episode and like and subscribe all right so don't just shut us off and go to go to that one watch all of this first and then go check it out and just before we move on i just i'd asked my friend uh, I'd, I'd said to my friend Callum that I was doing this review um, who was the one that got me into Lost and we did a kind of watch through together we'll say that I watched it in my house and I kind of updated him as we went I've actually talked a bit more about this in my um, mind wipe episode on casting views so if you want to hear a wee bit more of that story you can go on there uh, but I asked Callum what his favourite kind of moments or quotes were and one of his was just Walt and the other one was the bit when Jack talks about letting fear in for five seconds so I thought it might be worth talking about that scene because it is a really good scene I, I think so as well uh, it's obviously the first real interaction that Jack has with Kate and I think it's clear from the off that there's either a really strong friendship potential there or potentially more than that they do have quite a kind of easy manner with each other i would say i uh, because jack um asks kate to kind of sew him up because of the i think it's through the, he ran through bamboo didn't he so he cut himself i think that's how he got the cuts anyway it could have been sustained from the plane injury i don't know yeah um, but anyway i uh, so the he asked Kate to just to, to kind of patch him up. She's obviously not done that before. She's she kind of compares it to sewing curtains uh, using a, a sewing machine. But you know, Jack talks talks it through, talks talks that through with her, um, and she says that, she, that he, you know that she's she's scared, essentially. And then Jack kind of goes back and talks about how how he was the first surgery ever performed and. He was he was he was fear, and he mentioned that he would count to five, and that would be the the five seconds that fear would take over. After that five seconds, he was back in control. Um, so you ever he, used you ever used that in real life? No, I've not. It's a you? good uh, no, but I might start because um, it's quite a good a good be life lesson, I would say. So they have that interaction. I agree with you, mate. There's a wee bit of kind of chemistry there between the both of them. Um, I think it, you know, it does. I don't know if this is the power of, you know, me watching it. Power of escapism. There we go. But <laughs> um, we know what happens between those, those two. But I think at the time, I thought there was a kind of a, a chemistry there between them, and you know, it would be a wee bit more than a friendship. But obviously the count to five scene with Kate later on in the episode happens when they go and rescue the or oh, try and find the transceiver from the cockpit. So do we come back to the five second bit with Kate? After um, Yeah, we could do. And then just talk a wee bit about Kate's kind of backstory as well. Um so uh, they go on their first kind of mission, don't they? Uh to the to find the cockpit. And I've actually heard some theories that Although this is the pilot episode, quote unquote, that it was called this because of the pilot that they find, but it's probably not true. You know, when I, it's funny because when I turned the first episode off, you obviously see this, you know, the ends with the pilot. But the pilot's <laughs> called the pilot. Like, oh. <laughs> every TV show has a pilot, so it's, may- right. it's maybe it's maybe just a, a fun pun. Maybe. Uh, that is, and I, I made a note of this, which is, uh, this isn't just for self-promotion, but we obviously, a couple of months ago, we reviewed Predator. There's quite a lot of Predator vibes in Lost when it comes to the smoke monster, and in particular, the end of the, the first part of the pilot. Anytime. <laughs> oh, that's true, mate. That's, uh... <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I was watching, because I, I hadn't seen Predator the last time, or the first time I watched lost but now that i've seen it 
there is quite a lot of similarities how you never and the way they like destroy their victims and leave them up in trees and stuff there's quite a lot i wonder if predator inspired aspects of this i predator skins them didn't they take their spines out and keep them for trophies but i hangs them hangs them up in trees not, essentially not, I. not far off the way the the, uh, the other guy was left so they so they go on the first mission um to find the transceiver so that that mission consists of jack kate and charlie which we'll talk about as well at some point. Um, they find the pilot. The pilot. You do you recognise the pilot? I don't know if you ever watched the TV show, but I don't. I, I... What show? Heroes. No. So he was Matt from Heroes. Um. Anyway, so he was the pilot, and then he he finds so he he was saying that you know they they're looking for the play in the wrong place because they're like a thousand you know thousands of miles off course um passes them a the transceiver and at this point when it happens charlie's in the bathroom uh the toilet i should say um they can hear the the smoke monster again the noises the mechanical noises the you know the kind of eerie sounds so it's side it's getting closer and closer the pilot kind of looks at the window, tries to, to, to find out what it is, and the, and it grabs the pilot, and you can see the blood, which mm-hmm. I found quite interesting, seeing the blood kind of splattering all over the, the window. And at this point, it's still raining, so obviously, you know, I've got my essay head on here. It's raining, which means, you know, it's all is not right in the world, so something's wrong. So it's mm-hmm. um, having to kind of run. So the Pilot gets taken away. Char- Charlie comes out the toilet eventually. They run to back towards the, the the beach. It's pee in the rain, and you can hear the the monster getting closer and closer. Charlie falls. Jack goes back to get him, but at this point, Kate's left her herself, and she goes into a wee alcove in a tree. Um, and then this is the moment where she, you know she's obviously scared, and she counts to five. She's only letting she was that technique that Jack told her not so long ago is the one she's using now. Um letting fear creep in for five seconds and then make a run for it again. And they both get back. They, they get back to somewhere. It's not quite the beach, but they get back to somewhere. It stops raining. And then the pilot. Which I found quite interesting that Charlie's got the last two bits of dialogue in the the two episodes. Mm-hmm. So the, the pilot's hanging through a tree, and then Charlie says, "What does he say?" I come back. He goes, "I find. How does something like that happen?" Hmm. <laughs> so, so I, that was the end of the first the first episode. I found that you know, I mean, there's a lot of questions like, "What's that? What's that monster thing?" You know. But for me, it had me hooked anyway, mate. Do you know what I mean, I was like, "Oh, I need to find out what this is." Yeah. Um, and there's also the arrival of the polar bear in the second episode when they go on their second hunt. Aye, um, which which you're which you're led to think is the the smoke monster, and then Sawyer just kind of shoots it, shoots it dead. Um, quite a, quite a few shots. Ah, uh, we don't really know what it was at the time, do we? But because it made different sounds for this one, one stuff like that mechanical kind of eerie noises. It wasn't like that. It was just the kind of growling. So you know, it was an animal of some type, mm-hmm. and it, the kids, the bushes were running, like were were obviously moving. So I mean, we don't know at this point the, how the smoke monster, you know, takes forms and things, do we? So yeah. Um, but yeah, Sawyer kills it. Cut like a, a gun that he managed to to find for somewhere. This would be a good way to talk about Kate. Yeah, because the the gun that Sawyer has, I think he got from the Air Marshal, didn't he? I uh, got it from the US Marshal and his badge. Yeah, which um, obviously ties into Kate's story because you find and it's alluded to in the the first part of the pilot that she's got maybe a wee a wee secret, so to speak. Um, and then you find out that she was arrested on the plane and handcuffed to the the pilot, which we see in the the flashback as well. Aye, but she even before that in the first episode of the pilot, though she, she's always kind of hanging over Jack when he's treating him. 
Uh, as if she's like, oh, yeah. is it? Is he going to wake up? Is he going to be all right and stuff? So we don't really know what her her interest in it. This happens in the second mm-hmm. one as well, before they go on the hike. It's like, yeah. what is her interest in this guy? Why is she? You know, it's nobody else. She's kind of looking, looking about. It's just this guy here. But when you don't know the re- when you don't know the reveal, you can mistake that for just like common decency, like just general True. care. True. So, we, don't, we don't really know okay, yeah. at that point, do we? Uh, yeah, so she was the one. She was the fugitive. It was on who was who had been arrested by the U.S. Marshal. Yeah. Um. So we've been doing in this episode so far. So give it ten minutes remaining. Um. We've been doing what Kate was doing in the rain. We've been ignoring Charlie in favor right. of Jack. So, on I think you know what we're going to start with. On the count of three, one. Two, three. We are everybody. <laughs> you are everybody. Um, yeah. Drive Shaft's favorite bassist. They're still, they're still Charlie together. Bass. They're still together. What's that? They're still together. No, they're still together. That's true. <laughs> uh, Charlie boy, what can we I say? I am about, a Drive Shaft. What can we say about, about young Charlie? Um, Troubled soul. He is, and like again, like Holly, I think both of them are quite likable characters. Um, you know, he's he wants to get involved and talk to everybody. He wants mm-hmm. to get involved. But he's obviously got a ulterior motive um, in getting going on in the first mission. But I think you know he's his character. Like I say, he he just wants to talk to people. Um, he wants to help. He doesn't really judge. Do you know what I mean? I think that's important as well. Um, linking back to his flashback, because the second episode has two flashbacks, one of Kate, one of Charlie's. The first one is Charlie's. You can see that he's got withdrawal symptoms um, of some kind. Runs to the to the, the toilet at the front of the plane. Um, and that's where he, 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 uses, he finds his drugs and he uses them. Um, so that's why he went in the... In the the first mission to try and retrieve well he did retrieve the drugs that he, that he left in the, in the toilet so Charlie is I think very troubled troubled guy you see we find out why he's troubled you know as the seasons go on his flashbacks and things but um, you know I like Charlie a lot actually um, I just think he's he's very much like Holly mate do you know what I mean he's just his, his lines in, in the show Quite comedic, but until it's made clear that he's got a drug problem, they're kind of like trying to make you a wee bit suspicious of him. Like there's a few shots where like he's looking a bit sketchy, um, and obviously you find out that he's just wanting to essentially. Because I was wa- wondering why why does he volunteer to go on the first mission? Is it because he he's basically a ladies' man? He fancies Kate. He 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 talks to Shannon at one point as well. Is it? So he can like get away to a quiet place and take his drugs, or is it because he's just got so much pent up energy he just wants to be doing something? Well, I think it's maybe a mixture of all. All them, to be honest, we went, we went in the first mission because that's where his drugs were. So you had to go and retrieve the drugs first. Mm. So they were in the toilet. Ah, yes, got, that's true. Yeah. So he got them, and then he went on the second mission because that, that line was like, because um, Shannon was going, I'm going on hike, and Boone's like, no, you're no. He says, I am her, I'm going on hike. And she asked Charlie, are you going on hike? He goes, are you going on hike? He goes, yes. Well, I'm definitely going. <laughs> 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 so, I think is that maybe a, is a mixture of maybe trying yeah. to find a quiet place and Topi, well, if he's if he's standing still, sitting down, he, he's he's going to be struggling. So if he's, if he's down, if he's moving yeah, about, yeah, yeah. He's, he's kept busy. Then it'll take his mind off then potentially the drugs, you know what I mean? Yeah. So potentially I, that. I think something that made this show so special, and I'm sure you'll agree, is the flashbacks and the fact that even in the two pilots we get those three, but as the seasons go on, you obviously get various for the different characters. And I think that's what makes the show so strong and the character relationship so strong and how like you even see it in the pilot that I loved seeing the scene when they're walking through the the plane and like Charlie like knocks into Jack and you see it from like the different perspectives and 
he I think he pushes Shannon out the way at one point as well. You see that on the on the plane. Ah, uh, that's what I mean by you know the flashbacks that we seen in the first two yeah. episodes were kind of in parallel with one another. I mean, it happened at the same time, just through different people's eyes. Yeah. So I found it was quite it was, it was neatly done. I think mm-hmm. um, in that regard. So I did like it. Uh, so there's just one more character, unless I've missed any. We, we said at the start we weren't sure about doing this character by character, but I think Lost is one of those shows that actually does work quite well in that sense. Aye, uh, um, when you go into each characters, we kind of we mm-hmm. delve into the because they all um, work together. The scenes you know? anyway, aye, they're all connected. Um, so Claire's the last one. So she obviously arrives, and it's very obvious from the get go that she's pregnant, and obviously. Jack and Hurley and other characters, they obviously show quite a lot of uh, empathy for her because she's alone, pregnant, etc. Something that I could really kind of relate to was that moment because you know my current situation, but the moment where like she said she hadn't felt the baby move in like the whole day or a couple of days or whatever it was, but that moment where I think she's with Jim and he takes her hand and puts it on the stomach and she's just ecstatic that she's felt the baby moving for the first time in ages so I thought that was a really nice moment uh, It would have been for her um, just because obviously of the condition that she was she felt herself yeah. in at that moment in time you know Yeah. It, in terms of Claire we don't really see a lot of her I don't think in the, in the, in the first two episodes mm-hmm. um, so it would be quite unfair of me to say that you know we're whether she was annoying or not. Hmm. Um, she's less annoying than Shannon's. I don't think she's actually annoying in the pilot, to be fair. Um, the Claire, no, I don't, no, Claire, no, that's what I'm saying. So she, I think as the the season progressed, Claire got more and more annoying. Hmm. Um, so I do think that, but I think in the in the pilot episodes, was that enough for Claire? I don't think. Hmm. Um, but I get, I mean, you, you get a good few characters here. Yeah, and I think they all done it well. I think the whole, I think the pilot had to be done in two parts because of the amount of characters there were. Yeah, you know, I think they done it really well as well because they use these kind of missions. These you know, going to the, get the cockpit, going to the, the the on the hike to develop the the characters more as well because you couldn't have them all in the one scene. I don't think. Because there was there was just far yeah. too much personalities, too much backstories to try and you know. I and, think it was done. Unravel. I think it was done really well. There was a really nice shot just before we finish up. Was um, there's a scene I can't remember what happened in the scene, but it just shows the whole ensemble kind of like our banner above, just in like a row, and it just the camera just revolves around them. Do you remember uh, the meme? Uh, I do. I oh definitely. And see before as well, before we do it, I want to kind of bring, to, I think, the where the, the second episode kind of finished. So they got the transceiver, they moved to the higher ground, then they could hear the, you know, the, the they're trying to get help. So they try to use a transceiver to, to find help and put a, a kind of media distress call out there just to find that there's already one out there. Well, it's in French, as we as we spoke about earlier on in the in the episode, that Shannon was the only person that could kind of speak French or you know could read French, listen to French, whatever it is. And um, so that message had been playing for sixteen years and five months. Mm-hmm. It has been on a loop constantly. Yeah. Um, and see that, see that whole. I think this refers back to maybe the. The start of the episode as well, and not in so much gear detail, but it did what I thought of anyway. And see when the message is playing on the transceiver, and they're all trying to figure out what it says. The camera shots between them all is like they're all kind of want to hear. So even that point is chaotic as well because the, you've got Shannon trying to listen to the the transceiver. We've got um, is it Kate saying something as well? We've got Boone trying to provide confidence to Shannon to listen carefully to it. And then Shannon saying like, oh, I think it says this. We got Sawyer going, oh, you, you don't even speak French. So he's he's already, you know, like saying, you don't even speak French. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're saying. But the camera shots between all of those characters at that moment in time creates that sense of panic. Because 
get side counting down, trying to figure the calculations of how long it's been on a loop. And they're like, can he be on a loop? That's, and he eventually says it's 16 years and five months um, that that's been on a counter for. And it's like, that whole scene, mate, was brilliant because I think it reflects the start of the the, the start of, of the actual ep- pilot episode where there was that chaotic scene. Mm-hmm. But not in a great, not in a, in, a, in a smaller sense, don't get me wrong, mate, do you know what I mean? But if you watch it back again, mate, and you just watch the camera panning and every single character like, yeah. just going round in a, in a circle and you're trying to get a word in, uh, you know, um, it was quite, it was, for me, it was a good scene, mate. And we've got Charlie as well, who ends up with the last quote of that. And he goes, guys, where are we? So he was the mm. last the person to to finish up the episode with the quotes, which I found quite interesting as well. And that's a good way for us to finish up, eh? Aye. So James, I don't know about you, I've really enjoyed um, finally having the opportunity to speak some Lost on the podcast. No, it's been a long time coming, mate. We've always spoke about it, mate. Do you know what I mean? It's always been that way where, oh, we should do an episode of Lost, but we don't really know where to start because there's that many <laughs> of them and, and going th- actually having to watch them all again would be would take us forever and the point uh, would never come out. However, if, and we'll leave this in the hands of our listeners and viewers, if you'd like us to do an episode by episode, then, and the viewers are reflecting that, then We'll never say never. If you want us to do a season by season review, again, let us know. Um, if you don't want us to do any more, then that's just nasty. So just leave us alone. I'd be, um, be kind at that, don't you? Know. So yeah, <laughs> well, we generally would love to hear some feedback on the episode, uh, how you think we should, want us to build this with our community. So how you think we should take this lost kind of rewatch forward. Uh, any of your views on the, the pilot episodes. Uh, so yeah, just interested to see how this does and kind of where we hope to go from this in the future maybe get some guests on i know casting views have expressed an interest craig from what's the script seems to love lost as well that could be another potential guest at some point um so yeah there's there's plenty of uh, possibilities to go from here so if you have enjoyed us and um, be sure to give us a, a follow like or share on facebook x instagram threads and tiktok and subscribe on youtube follows on spotify and all the other platforms okay so we were seismic cinema we believe in the power of escaping the deserted island um, and we'll see you next time thanks folks